Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave with Evil Eye Games. Today we're going to continue on with our third person shooter. And uh, in today's video, we're going to start making a main menu system. And in order to do that, we're going to have to do a little prep work first. Um, one thing you may notice is if you open up any of the widgets, uh, in this case we made the gameplay widget, and you click on the text, and you want to change the font of the text, the only font that comes with UE4 is this Roboto font. Well, in order to grab some more fonts, we can go online. Um, I use 1001fonts.com, and it has a whole insane amount of fonts. And what you can do with this site is you can go ahead and search by categories. So at the top here, you can select a font category. Say you want to find something. Um, uh, we'll look for some girly text here. Um, it'll sort that out. Uh, in this box right here, you can type in um, a sample text. And it will update the preview of the um, fonts below. One thing you want to make sure of when selecting a font is you want to make sure it's available for commercial use. So to the right of that there's this little price tag here and if you click on that it'll turn green and it'll filter out any of the fonts that are available for commercial use. So if you end up planning on making a game that you're going to release you want permission to use those fonts. And you can double check on this too. Uh, when you find a font that you like, uh, to the right hand side next to the download, there is this uh, price tag right here. And you can click on it, and it'll bring you to the page of the font. And at the bottom, under the More tab here, it's going to give you uh, what kind of permissions are allowed for it. And it'll give you the specific license for that font. Once you find a font or a couple of fonts that you like, you can go ahead and click the download button and it will download it to your download folder, however your browser is set up. Now once you get it downloaded, it's going to show up in a folder and it's going to come in a zip file. So you're going to definitely have to unzip it. So you're going to select the zip package, you're going to right click and extract all, and go ahead and extract the font. Now I like to keep all my fonts in a special font folder and you'll double click on the font and you'll have usually a read this and then you'll have an open type font file. And the open type font file is what we want to go ahead and import into UE4. I already have a couple of fonts that I want to go ahead and import. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go back into UE4 and in our main window. I'm going to create a new folder and we're going to call it fonts. And then we're going to go ahead and grab that folder. And basically, you just have to click and drag it into the folder. And you want to wait until that little plus sign appears and let go. And it'll go ahead and import that font. And then I'm going to add a second font as well that I want to use. So once again, I'll click and drag it into the Explorer here. And we'll let go. And it'll import the fonts. Now once the fonts are in, you can go ahead and rename these. And now when we go into our widget and select some text, and we go to the font dropdown, you'll now have those fonts available. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go into our HUD folder here. And we're going to have to set up the way that we want the menu to work. Now right now we have this HUD blueprint. And what we're doing in the HUD blueprint is when we begin play, we're just creating our gameplay widget and we're adding it to the viewport. Very simple. But we want to be able to switch between different HUD displays like a main menu, a pause menu, our actual gameplay menu, and some settings menus. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Explorer. We're going to right click and we're going to go to blueprints and select an enumeration. And I'm going to call this the HUD state enum. I'm going to go ahead and double click and open this up. And we're going to go ahead and add four new enumerators. So for the first one, I'm going to call this the 
gameplay widget. The second one, I'm going to call the main menu widget. The third one, I'm going to call the loading screen widget. And the last one, I'm going to call the pause menu widget. And we'll go ahead and click save and we can close out of our enumerator. Next, we're going to have to create some new widgets. So we're going to right click, go to user interface and select widget blueprint. This first one, I'm going to call the loading screen widget. And then I'm going to go ahead, right click on it and we're going to duplicate it. And I'm going to call this one the main menu widget. I'm going to right click and duplicate again. And we're going to call this one the pause menu widget. And finally, one last one, we're going to right click and duplicate. And I'm going to call this the settings menu widget. Now you'll notice that I didn't add the settings menu into the enumerator. And there is a specific reason for that. In order to access the settings menu from both the pause menu and the main menu, I'm just going to basically add it on top of the existing menu system. So whatever is displayed on screen, the settings menu will be created and put on top of what we're looking at. So that way it'll be easy to get in to and out of the settings menu. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our 3P player HUD. And right now I'm going to go ahead and actually, I think I can get rid of all this. And what I'm going to do instead is we're going to right click and we're going to get player controller. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to promote this to a variable. And I will call it uh, player controller. And we'll plug that into our begin play. Next, I'm going to move down and I'm going to right click on our graph and I'm going to create a new custom event. And I'm going to call this set current widget. And this is what we're going to call on in order to change the widgets for our screen. So I'm going to drag out and I'm going to start with a sequence. And the first thing we're going to do with the sequence is we want to destroy any widgets on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable and I'm going to call this the current widget. And then for the type, I'm going to go ahead and search for a user widget. And we're going to get a reference to that user widget. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this out and we're going to get our current widget. And we want to check to see if this is valid. And we'll use the one with the question mark. And we'll plug our then zero into the execution pin. And we're going to go ahead and drag off of our current widget. And we're going to search for remove from parent. And if our current widget is valid, we're going to go ahead and remove it from parent. And what the remove from parent is doing is it takes it away from the display and it lines it up for garbage collection. So the garbage collection is going to be automatically responsible for destroying the widgets. There's no actual destroy widget command that you can use. But if you end up removing from parent when the garbage collection makes its pass, it's going to see that the current widget has been removed from the screen and it's going to go ahead and wipe that from memory. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch our HUD. So what we're going to have to do is in our input here, we're going to add a new input and we're going to call this the new screen. And this is the new screen that we want to switch to. And for the type, we're going to switch for that, uh, or we're going to select that widget enum that we ended up creating. 
and I forget what it was called. It was the, oh, the HUD state enum. So for the type, we're gonna go ahead and search for the HUD state enum, and we'll select that. We're gonna drag off of our new screen input, and we're gonna search for a switch, and we'll select the switch on HUD state enum. We'll go ahead and plug this into our then zero pin. And then based on whatever input we select when we call this event, we're gonna change up our display here. Now what we're gonna do is we'll start with the gameplay widget here, we'll drag out, and we're going to go ahead and create a user widget. So we'll search for, here we go, create widget. And we're gonna set this to our gameplay widget. And we're gonna need a reference to our player controller. So we're gonna drag out a reference to our player controller. And then we're gonna go ahead and set our current widget. Now, this action we're actually gonna perform multiple times. So I'm gonna end up making this into a macro. So I'm gonna highlight this, and we're gonna right click on it, and we're gonna to collapse to a macro. And I'm gonna call this macro create widget. Now I'm gonna double click and open up the create widget macro. And we're gonna to wanna to go ahead, and for the class here, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this into an input. So that way we're gonna select the class of the widget from the macro. And then we're gonna drag the execution pin to the output. And we're also gonna drag the widget reference to the current widget to the output as well. And we also wanna do one other thing. Uh, we wanna add this to the viewport. So we're gonna drag off of our current widget reference here. And we're gonna search for add to viewport. And we're just gonna plug that in line. So in our macro, we're taking an input class. We're creating a user widget of that class. We're setting it to our current widget, adding it to our viewport, which adds it to the screen. And then we're going to go ahead and put out an output here. And I'm gonna name this the current widget for the output. And we're gonna go ahead and compile and save this. And we're gonna close our create widget macro. So now it's gonna throw a fit because we don't have a selected class. So for our gameplay widget here, I'm gonna go ahead and set that to gameplay widget. And if we hit compile, the error will go away. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drag out and we're gonna do set input mode, game only. So when we're in the gameplay widget, which is gonna be our heads up display for the player, we only want them to be able to put input into the game. We don't want them reacting with the layout on the screen. And it's gonna need a target, which is gonna be our player controller. Now for the other screens here, we're gonna do something a little bit different with the input game mode, but we can call this create widget multiple times. So I'm gonna do duplicate this, one for every pin on our enum. And we're gonna plug each one in to our switch. And then we wanna set the class appropriately for the switch. So the second one is the main menu. We'll set that to the main menu widget. We'll set the loading screen to the loading screen widget. And finally, the pause menu, we'll set to the pause menu widget. And for these other um, create widgets, we're gonna to want to actually Oops. We're gonna to want to actually set the input mode to the UI only. We don't want them to be able to react with the game when these widgets are up. So we're gonna go ahead and drag off the widget here and we're gonna set input mode. And we're gonna set it to UI only. And this is going to go ahead and require a reference to the player controller. So for the target, we'll plug in our player controller. 
And then we can actually go ahead and just connect these last two up to this set input mode UI only because they're all going to function the same. So if we go ahead and compile and save, we're going to go back up to our begin play. And we want to go ahead and actually drag out from here. And we want to call our set current widget. And we are the target, so we can leave the target as self. And then we're going to set this to the loading screen widget. So when the HUD initially loads up for the first time, it's going to go straight to the loading screen. So we're going to compile and save. And we're going to go back to our main window. And we're going to have to actually configure these different screens. So I'm going to save all real fast. And we're going to go into our loading screen here. And I'm just going to go ahead in our palette here. I'm going to search for an image. And I'm going to drag it and drop it on the canvas panel. I'm going to go ahead and anchor it to the center. And for some reason, whenever you add an image to a UMG element here, it always makes it a variable. We don't really need this to be a variable, so I'm going to uncheck that. And then for the position, I'm just going to set it to 0, 0. And then for the size, I'm going to set it larger than the bounds. So we'll make it uh, 2,000 by 2,000. And then we'll set it to 0.5 on the alignment for both the X and the Y. And I'm going to select the brush, or correction, I'm going to select the color and opacity. And I'm going to set this to black. And one useful thing with our color picker here is if you're going to use a color frequently, uh, you can actually drag the color and drop it into this top section here. So you can use it for later. So you don't have to go around and play with all the settings every single time. And you can actually create multiple themes in here. So that way, if you're working in a UI and you want the colors to all be consistent, you can use one of these color palettes up here and keep picking the same colors. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And we have a black backdrop to our screen. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to search for a text. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this onto our canvas panel here. And once again, we're going to go ahead and anchor this to the center. Uh, we're going to set the position to 0, 0. And we're going to set the offset to 0.5. And we're going to go ahead and for the text, we're going to say loading dot dot dot. And I misspelled that. And then we're going to set uh, size to content. So it'll automatically size the box based on what's inside of it. And then we can go to our font here. And you can select a font that you want to use. And then set the size of it. And if we compile and save, and we hit play, we're going to start off with our loading screen because the HUD is loaded. And it initially sets our screen to loading, but nothing is setting our screen beyond that. So I'm going to escape out of here. And I'm going to go ahead and close our loading screen widget. Now you can definitely add more stuff to the loading screen, but I'm just making a basic template right now so that I can use it later. The next thing we're going to have to do is I want to create a map for our main menu. So I'm going to go into our maps folder. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select a level and I'm going to call this the main menu. And if we go ahead and double click on our main menu, there's going to be literally nothing in this world. There's not going to be any lighting. There's not going to be any objects. It's going to be completely blank. And for now, that's going to be perfectly fine. And we're going to have to edit the blueprints for the level in order to go ahead and change the screen. So I'm going to go to Blueprints, and we're going to open Level Blueprint. And this allows you to actually change and interact with things in the level. So I'm not going to be using the event tick. I'm going to get rid of that. And we're going to go ahead, and we want to get reference to the HUD. So if we right click, we're going to go ahead and search for Get Player Controller. 
And from our player controller, we're going to get HUD. And we're going to have to cast this HUD to our HUD. So we'll search for our cast two. And we'll cast to our 3P player HUD. And we'll go ahead and connect that into our event begin play. And then as our player HUD, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the current widget, which is that custom event that we just created. And we're going to set this to the main menu. And we're going to compile. And if we go and hit play, well, we're not going to get anything because we haven't designed our main menu yet. Now you're going to notice there's probably some light in here because your character is getting spawned into the level. And that is something we're going to address at a later time. So we'll go ahead and close out of this. We'll go back into our HUD and we're going to open up our main menu widget. Now, once again, I'm going to create a pretty basic menu, but I still kind of want it to be at least somewhat attractive. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search for an image. And we're going to drag that onto our canvas panel. And I'm going to go ahead and undo the variable. Uh, I'm going to set it to anchor in the center. And once again, we'll set it to a position of 0, 0. And I'll set the screen size to 2000 by 2000. And then the alignment to 0.5. And I'm going to go ahead and set the color and opacity to our black. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're adding things to your screen is this Z order. What a Z order does is it describes when something overlaps with another thing, what order it's going to be stacked. So the lower the number, the lower in the stack it's going to be. So a Z order of zero is going to be at the very bottom and a Z order of one is going to sit on top of a zero, two will sit on top of a one, etc., etc. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in, or I'm going to search for a vertical box. And there's a vertical box and a horizontal box. I'm going to add this to our canvas panel. And what the vertical box is going to do is it will automatically stack anything put into it in a vertical fashion. A horizontal box will stack anything horizontally and it will affect anything directly parented to that box. So we're going to use a combination of horizontal boxes and vertical boxes to actually create a menu kind of grid effect. So we're going to set up the vertical box here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the anchor to the center. I'm going to give it a position of zero, zero. And then for the size, I'm going to go ahead and set it to the screen size, which in default, uh, in the UE4 widget is going to be a 1920 by 1080. And I'll go ahead and set the alignment to 0.5 on both. And we want to make sure with the Z order here, we're going to set it to one because we want it to sit on top of the image. And keep in mind, the Z order will always apply to any of its children. So you won't be able to set the Z order of anything that's parented to the vertical box as the topmost object will determine the Z order. So next what I want to do is I want to go ahead and search for a horizontal box. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to drag two of these onto our vertical box. So you should see them both parented to the vertical box here. And if we click on each one, I'm going to set these to fill for now. You're going to see that one takes the upper portion of the screen, one takes the bottom portion of the screen, and the horizontal boxes are stacked vertically within the vertical box. So next, I want to go ahead and search for some text. And I'm going to go ahead and drag some text onto the top horizontal box. And I kind of want this to be our logo. So to the right here, I'm going to set it to center, both vertically and horizontally. And we'll click on the fill and then I'll place it in the center of this horizontal box. And I don't know, we'll give our game a name. And we'll set the font of the text. And we can even give it color. And actually, 
I'm going to add a second text box to this horizontal box. And I'm going to give it the same settings. So I'm going to set in the horizontal box here, I'm going to set it the horizontal alignment to center. Um, and then the text is going to be auto with centering. And then the second text box is going to be auto with centering as well. So for the second text, I'm going to set this to 500. I'm going to set our font. And then I'm just going to adjust this. Uh, reason standing is I want to give the text different colors. So for this first one, I'm going to give it a uh, color and opacity. And I have a specific color in mind. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this to our color palette. And we'll hit OK. And we can up the size of these fonts. And we can go ahead and compile and save. So we have a logo on top and then we have uh, nothing in the bottom yet. And we're going to put the menu bar across the bottom. So in the bottom here, I want to go ahead and we want to search for buttons. And I'm going to go ahead and add four buttons to our bottom horizontal box. And I'm going to set these to fill so that the buttons will space evenly across the bottom here. But the height of our horizontal box is really tall. Now we don't have the ability to set the height of our horizontal box to a specific number. We can use it to fill or we can use it to base it on the content. And I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to click on our bottom horizontal box here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go wrap with and we want to select a size box. And a size box will allow you to override the size of any children. So in this case, I want to override the height. And let's say, we'll try 500 and see how that goes. It doesn't really do anything for me. Let's try 100. Oh, and you have to set the, uh, the size to auto. I almost forgot about that. So with the size box, set the size to auto, and then you can create a height in here, and you can determine how big you want that box to be. I'm gonna set it to 200, and then I'm gonna add some padding on this. I'm gonna add 10 to the padding. So that's going to place um, a space of 10 pixels around the outer edges of it. So now we have four buttons across the bottom of our screen, they look pretty well sized up. So now I'm going to expand our horizontal box here and we're going to search for some text. And I'm going to go ahead and drag some text onto each one of the buttons. And then we can set the text for each one. So for the first one, we'll call it uh, new game. And we can set the font and everything else. Uh, for the second one, we're going to call this one Continue Game. For the third button, we're going to call this one Settings. And the last one, we're going to call this Exit. Now the buttons don't look very good in themselves, so you can select each button. I'm going to start with the top button here for our new game, and it's already going to automatically be set to is variable. So we're going to give this button a name. We're going to call this the new game button. 
And then if we expand the style tab here, you have settings for normal, hovered, and pressed. And we're gonna expand each one of these. And what this will do is it will change the appearance of the button based on whether the button is not selected, whether it has a mouse hovering over it, or if the button has been pressed. So I'm just gonna set the tint of these buttons, and I'm gonna set it to black for normal, and then the tint for the hovered, I'm gonna to set to an orange color. And then finally, the tint for selected, I'm also gonna to set to the same orange cover. And then I'm gonna to go to the second button, and we're gonna give this a name, we're gonna call it the continue button. And once again, we will set the colors. The third button, we'll call this the settings button. And we will set the colors. And then finally, the last button we'll call the exit button. All right, so now we have four solid color buttons, but there's no way to really differentiate between them besides mousing over. So if we compile and save and we hit play, it'll load up our menu here. And it looks like I missed the settings on some of them. So if we go ahead and compile and we hit play, it'll load up our menu for us. And if I mouse over them, you can see the buttons down here. So as I mouse up to it, it'll highlight the buttons and they will change colors. Now these buttons don't do anything as of yet. So we're gonna have to take care of that next. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this window. And at the top right, I'm gonna select on graph. And we have an event graph just like we have any other blueprint. And I'm gonna delete these event ticks and event constructs. And to make it easy, I'm gonna to go to the designer. And if we select each button and we scroll all the way to the bottom, there is an unclicked event with a plus button. So if we click the plus, it's going to add an event to our graph when that button gets clicked. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this for each one of our buttons. So at this point we have an event for unclicked for the new game button, uh, for the continue button, the settings button, and the exit button. Now the exit button is gonna be really easy. We're gonna drag out from that and we're gonna search for a command and we'll find the execute console command. And then in the command here, we're simply gonna type quit. And if we go ahead and compile and save and hit play, these three buttons don't work, but if we hit the exit, it'll go ahead and exit out of the program. Now, when we click the uh, new game button, what we're gonna want to happen is we wanna end up loading a map. And we're also gonna wanna end up changing the screen to our loading screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and we're gonna get our controller. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get the HUD. We're gonna go ahead and cast to our 3P player HUD. And then as our 3P player HUD, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set the current widget 
and we're going to set this to our loading screen. From there, we're going to put in a little delay because the level we have so far is really small and you're never going to see the loading screen. And also, you want enough time for this widget to load up before it actually goes into the loading action. So I put in a load uh, delay of two seconds. And we're going to drag out and we're going to search for open level. And we're going to have to type in the name of the level. So right now, in our maps folder, I have the test map. So I'm going to type that in. So if we go ahead and compile and save, we're going to hit play. And we hit new game. It'll go to a loading. There will be a short delay. And then it's not going to change from the loading screen. And the reason is because the HUD isn't getting a command to switch the screen back to the gameplay. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And we're going to have to go in and open up our test map. And from our main window here, we're going to have to go into the blueprints and open the level blueprint. And I'm going to get rid of this event tick again. And from our event begin play here, we're going to go ahead and put in a delay. And we'll set it to one second. All right, we'll make it two. So I have a delay of two seconds. And then we're going to go ahead and get our player controller. We're going to get our player HUD. And then we're going to go ahead and cast to our 3P player HUD. And as our 3P player HUD, we're going to set the current widget. So we'll go ahead and plug this all up. And then for set current widget here, we want to set it to the gameplay widget. So we'll go ahead and compile. And then we're going to have to go ahead and open up our main menu again. So from our main menu, if we hit play and we click on new game, we're going to see our loading screen. And then after a few seconds, we have our actual gameplay and we can go ahead and control the player at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of there. And then one other thing I'm going to do is in our main menu widget here, I'm going to select our continue game button and I'm going to set this to disabled. So under behavior is enabled, I'm going to uncheck the box and I'm going to compile and save that. And if we hit play, the button will be grayed out so we can't select it. And we're going to actually perform a check. So after we get into saving our game, we're going to have a check that runs in the background that will check to see if we have a previously saved game. And if we do, it'll go ahead and activate the button for us. And if we don't, it'll keep the button disabled like this. Now we're going to have to handle our settings. So I'm going to exit out of here. And we're going to open up our HUD folder and we're going to go ahead and open up the settings menu. And for now, I'm just going to go ahead and add an image. And we'll make this our background image. So the Z will be zero. And I'm not going to need this as a variable. I'm going to anchor it to the center. I'm going to position it at zero, zero and we'll make the size 2000 by 2000 and set the alignment to 0.5. And then for the color and opacity, I'm just going to go ahead and set this to the black. And so that we know it's working, I'm going to go ahead and just set, add some uh, text to the canvas panel. And we'll just anchor it in the center and we'll set the position to 0, 0, and uh, the alignment to 0.5. We'll size to content and we'll just call this the settings screen. So if we compile and save, we're going to go back to our main menu widget. And in our graph, we're going to find the on clicked settings button. We're going to go ahead and create a widget.
And for the class, we're going to set it to the set settings menu widget. And then we have to give it a reference to the player controller. So we're going to right click and get player controller. And we'll go ahead and plug that into the owning player. And then we're going to go ahead and from the return value, we're going to select add to viewport. And we're going to go ahead and compile and save. So if we hit play and we hit our settings button, our settings screen comes up. So we are going to have to configure our settings screen here. And I'm going to go ahead and open up our settings menu widget. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this text. So we're going to delete that. And in our palette here, I'm going to search for a vertical box. And we're going to drag one onto our canvas panel. Then for this vertical box, we want to go ahead and make sure the Z order is one because we want to sit on top of our background image. And then I'm going to go ahead and anchor it to the center, set it to zero, zero. And then the size is going to be the size of the screen, which is 1920 by 1080. And we'll set the alignment to 0.5 for both the X and the Y. Then I'm going to go ahead and add in a horizontal box. And we'll add this to our vertical box. And then inside of our vertical box here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some text. Uh, in my case, I'm going to add three text blocks. So for the first one, uh, or for the first two, I'm just going to use it to put in our title menu. And then we can resize and recolor these as we need. And then you can adjust the alignment to where you want them uh, vertically or horizontally as well. And we can also add some padding to the horizontal box. Just to move it in on the screen a little bit. All right, so we have our vertical box with a nested horizontal box inside of it. And then the text for the title. So... For this horizontal box, I'm going to rename it, and we're just going to call this the title, so that way we quickly know what it is. I'm going to add some uh, vertical boxes in a horizontal box. So I'm going to go ahead and search for a horizontal box, and I'm going to make this a child of our vertical box. And we want this to go ahead and fill, so it'll take up all of the area. And then I'm going to go ahead and search for two vertical boxes and add this to our new horizontal box. So they both should be children. And I'm going to set for now both of these to fill. So we'll have two areas left and right of each other. I'm going to have it to the left. So this is going to be like a tab setting. And then the options for each tab section are going to appear on the right. But this vertical box on the left, I want it to be a little bit thinner here. So I'm going to right click and we're going to wrap it with a size box. And we have to make sure in the vertical box here or in the size box now uh, that it's set to auto. And we're going to click on the width override. And we're going to go ahead and set the width to, let's try 300. Maybe a little bit more. We'll set it to 400 like that. So I have this box on the left here. That'll be our tabs for the right. 
And then the box on the right here is going to have all of our different options. So in the left hand side here in our vertical box, I actually want to put in an outline. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to search for a border. And I'll go ahead and drag a border onto our vertical box. And I'm going to set this to fill and it's going to be all white. I'm going to go ahead and then I'm going to nest another border inside of that border. We're also going to set it to um, vertically aligned fill and horizontally aligned fill. And I'm going to set the padding to three. And then I'm going to set the content color and or not the content color, I'm going to set the brush opacity to our black color. And you'll notice that it's going to give it like a nice little white outline. So if we compile and save and we hit play and we click on our settings, you're going to see this nice little white outline here. And I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I want to do the same thing to our vertical box on the right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag two borders. One border nested on the other. So for the topmost border, we want it to fill and we want the color to be white. And on the second border, we want to set the padding here to three. And then we want to go ahead and set the brush color to black. And if we compile and save and hit play, we'll see that there is this nice little white border. But the line gets thicker right here because the two borders are touching up against each other. So there's a six pixel width here instead of a three. So in our subsequent border on the right here, I'm going to go ahead and open up the padding. And for the left one here, I'm going to set this to zero. So we'll compile and save and hit play. And now we'll have a nice three pixel line right here. So I'm going to click on our nested border here for the left hand side of our menu. So we should have the bottom most border selected and we're going to search for a vertical box and I'm going to go ahead and drag it and drop it on our border. So there's going to be a vertical box inside of it and I'm going to set the padding for this to zero and then we're going to need to add some buttons. So I'm going to have a graphic setting button. I'm going to have a sound setting button and I'm going to have a control button. And then I'm going to have an back button because we need a way to get out of this menu. So there's going to be four buttons in here, but I want the back button to be at the bottom here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to search for a spacer. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in between the third and the fourth button here. And I'm going to select the spacer and we're going to set it to fill. So that will go ahead and separate these buttons. And then for the button themselves, uh, we need to be able to set how big they are. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click on each button and I'm going to select wrap with a size box. And then for each size box, I'm going to go ahead and override the height. And uh, we can try a couple of different values here. 200 is a little too much. All right, 100 looks good. So I'm going to set the height override for each size box to 100. So now we have these nice spaced out buttons. And then for each button, I'm going to go ahead and add some text to each button. And then we can set the text for each. So for the top button here, I'm going to rename this button. And I'm going to call this 
the graphics button. And then we can set the tint for each button. Just like we did at the main menu. And we can set the text block in there. Uh, we're going to set the text for the top one. We're going to call it uh, graphics. And we can set the font as well. And then for the next button down, we're going to call this the sound button. And we can set the colors. And then for the text, uh, I'm just going to set it to sound. And then for the final button, I'm going to set this to the controls button. And then for the last button in the bottom right now, we're going to call this the back button. And we can set the text on this as well. So we'll call it back. We'll give it a font and set the size. And uh, it looks like I forgot to set the controls text. So I will set that to controls and we'll set the font and the size. So we can compile and save. Now the method that we're using to add the options menu to the screen is just basically adding it to the viewport. So we can actually take care of getting rid of this options menu very quickly. Uh, so I'm going to do what I did before where I selected each button. We're going to scroll to the bottom and we're going to add an unclicked event. And we're going to do that once each for each button. So now we have an on click for our graphics button, our sound button, and our controls button. And for the back button, all we're simply going to need to do is select remove from parent. So if we compile and save and hit play, we can click on our settings menu. We have our controls over here. So if I hit back, we're going to go back to the main menu. So basically, when we hit the settings button, it spawns this uh, options menu and just lays it on top of the main menu. Then when we hit the back button, it takes itself away from the screen. And then finally, just to make things a little more organized, we have the horizontal box to the left here, or correction, the vertical box to the left. And I'm going to rename this so we can keep track of it. So just double click on it and I'm going to call it left menu. So that way when we're looking over here, we can easily pick out what's the left menu and what's what. All right. So that's going to complete today's video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start setting up our options menu so we can set up uh, what happens in the right hand pane here um, when one of these buttons on the left is clicked. And we'll probably start setting up different options within that menu. 
So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. And thanks for watching.